I don't know where to begin. I mean, um, honestly, she has changed our lives. Like, look at this. So this is Bianca, a dream come true. She's the cutest, most loving creature in the entire world. She has absolutely won us over with all her kisses. Look at her. So I wanted to tell you all about my experience mothering this little fairy angel for the past week uh, from the perspective of a mom of two cats and also about the cuteness and complexities of having a teacup chihuahua. Bianca is nine weeks old. She currently weighs 700 grams. You guys, I'm whispering because she's kind of taking a nap. I had no idea how little she would be. She looks so much bigger in pictures and in even in video. Um, I waited to talk about her because I don't know. I didn't want to like bother her, but I've come to realize she just wants to hang with me. As you can see, she's super relaxed or otherwise, like she does have a big personality in her tiny sweet body and she will let you know when something bothers her. I think about two years ago, I started dreaming of Bianca. I didn't want to rush it. I wanted to understand the pros and cons of having a chihuahua in my life and to see if that was a good fit, if I could be a good mother to her. My research paid off and I got some great information online. I still do. My husband and I, we don't have kids. That's topic for a separate video. And we do have our fairy angels, which I believe you have met, two exotic short hair cats. So this is Lola and this is the little one Mumi. Very zen beautiful creatures. They have been our babies for the past um, 10 years. We both had other cats before in our childhoods. I'm not really sure why but I started feeling very driven to the idea of having a puppy in my life. Although my cats are very very affectionate. I don't know. I felt like I was ready for another fairy baby. My youngest cat Mumi uh, that you've met before is around five years old now so and the other thing is that I'm not going to expand a lot on. We have been on the verge of moving to a different country and it hasn't happened. It probably won't. You know moving to a new country with three pets we always wondered like who was going to rent as an apartment because here like we have our place, we can do whatever we want. Moving abroad, we would rent, it would be a smaller, let's say, universe of apartments that would be willing to rent to us with three pets. My husband is very supportive, has always been. I wouldn't say he, he dreamt of a chihuahua, I think he always thought he wanted bigger dogs and because we live in an apartment, we already have two cats. Um, that was pretty much out of the question, you know, having, I don't know, a German Shepherd or a Labrador. I'm sorry. Are you okay? Thank you. Yes, yes. Oh, is he dog? Say I slowly introduced the idea to him and it was not, definitely not a rushed decision. I wanted him to be in as well. Although I knew that, uh, well, I'm the one that works from home. He works from home, I would say maybe twice a week, once a week. I knew I was going to be the one that would train her and would just basically take care of her everyday needs. And then one day we were having breakfast and my husband was, you know what, I cannot ask you to keep putting this off. This is something you have in your heart. I want you to be happy. So go ahead and do it and then we will figure things out. I'm sure there's a way around things. But you guys, you wouldn't believe how she very quickly just melted his heart when she started kissing him and like wagging her little Hail, so much joy every time she sees him. It's impossible not to fall in love with her. And then when we got her, we, he told me, do you think we're crazy? Like we have three pets. Uh, our apartment is, I would say, rather uh, good size uh, over, I think overall. This is in the city. So we also have a park nearby, but it's not like we don't have a house with a um, backyard or what you would typically imagine when having a dog. When you say I have two cats and dog, it sounds like a lot, but all three combined weigh under 10 kilos. So 20 pounds, three angels, they behave so well. Like for instance, the other day, I, I always clip their nails and 
I tried with her the other day. I'm not gonna say she liked it. She moved a lot, a lot more than my cats do, but we managed. So I guess it's, you know, a matter of doing it so she gets used to it and rewarding her. I live like two blocks away from our vet and she gave her a good checkup. She said she has a strong heart. Her apple head um, just seems super healthy. Starting to work on like using my finger to touch her mouth so that she gets used to me, you know, eventually brushing her teeth. I'm really up for the challenge of taking care of this little one. First thing I thought when I saw her, aside from, oh my God, she's gorgeous and so sweet. She's way, way, way too small. Like how, how am I going to do this? She's so tiny. Seemed like this huge, huge, huge responsibility. All living creatures are a huge responsibility, but being this small, like she seemed like an even more overwhelming responsibility. Like I knew theoretically they were really small, but I didn't know they could be this small, especially because she's still a very, very young baby. And then I thought, okay, but I'm, I'm ready and prepared. I have been researching about chihuahuas for a while. And so I did have like a few things ready, like, mm. She's so little, there's no clothing size for her. In fact, I had to improvise and her first sweater was one of my socks with a couple of holes for her legs. This was knitted by hand by a lovely lady. <laughs> I had to send her, this lady, her measurements. The circumference of her neck is 17 centimeters, chest 23 centimeters, and her back from neck to tail is 15 centimeters long. She gets super cold really, really fast and she shivers. I always thought that was kind of um, maybe eccentricity. Now I understand that they really, really need their clothes because they are like super tiny. They have zero fat in their bodies. And added to that, if they're uh, short hair chihuahua, just like Bianca, she gets really, really cold really, really fast. Maybe you don't feel it, but she will feel the slightest changes in temperature. And then when she doesn't feel that um, cold anymore, she will remove the clothes herself. So the idea is of course, uh, when we travel, that we do travel to the beach or even internationally, um, the idea is that she would have a size that uh, would make it easier for us to bring her with us everywhere we go. The most important thing because of her size was to have a protected area where she could play and I could c even carry that with me. So I bought this foldable playpen. I call it the Bianca Services. Has her food, she has a little bed, and she has her pee pad, a bunch of toys. It gives her her space away from the cats, which is great in the initial phases, you know, in the adaptation between all of them, because the cats, of course, this is their home, and now it's her home as well. So it's, it's good that both feel safe, protected, and respected, you know, and that felt like the right way to do it. It's like uh, she has like her little tiny apartment with everything she needs. And because she's so tiny, it's good to have an idea of where she is at all times. I also like that it's not a cage, like having bars around her. This is not what I wanted. I even wish it was completely like crystal windows, like no, not even the net. Then at the top, it can be open for easy access and then it has a side door. Now when I want to make sure that she remains inside the playpen because I'm doing something else and I don't want her wandering around, maybe eating something that could, you know, put her in danger or, um, you know, whenever I cannot just keep an eye on her, she can nap or play or eat whatever for a few minutes and I know she's okay. It's a very easy to clean fabric, although she has been a blessing in that department. Anyone who's mummy to a cat knows that uh, potty training a cat is like effortless. They just instinctively know what to do. And when it comes to dogs, I had this other idea. I wasn't ready to be struggling with potty training for like a year. This little one comes in, I put her on top of the pee pad and then I just say pee 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 pee. I actually say it in Spanish. I said pee teen pee teen. She just goes. It was 
magic. She does it every single time. Even when I'm carrying her, she will be all quiet and maybe, maybe napping like now. And then she will start feeling like uncomfortable. Like you don't know what's going on. She wants to be let go. Always, always. That's because she wants to go to the toilet and she doesn't want to. Can you guys believe that? Uh, to me, that's unbelievable. I don't know if I've been super lucky or what, but I guess the one thing that I have been doing right is setting up that area and then offering her, you know, to go every two hours, which is her bladder has that capacity. All puppies can hold it for just two hours, apparently, based on my research. She's the cutest, most loving thing in the world. I know some people are going to be against me doing this but we do sleep with her i can't find it in my heart to just leave it there in the playpen the entire night she craves for the love and attention and she behaves so well in her bed like she just wants to curl up in a little ball next to me just feel the warmth of my body it's honestly all she wants and how can i say no like i am now her mommy i mean we're so blessed to have her at the very least we can do first time she slept with us the first night honestly i couldn't sleep I really could not sleep. I was really concerned that she would somehow fall off the bed or that we would um, bump into her. She's so tiny, I thought we were going to hurt her in her sleep. So she slept next to me, had like um, the pillow. We all got used to it and things really worked out. We haven't had any weird experiences with that. And I do get up every two hours to offer her her little foldable playpen with a pee pad. She does sleep on her own during the day and she's uh, handling that super well. Plays on her own as well. And she's also starting to play with our cats. Um, very respectfully on both ends and Lola the eldest cat basically ignored her the first few days which is fine I mean everybody once again needs to have their own space and kind of um, accept the new situation at their own pace and um, eventually she started mimicking her like you see her sleeping now but she does like any puppy have these very hyper active moments it's one hour in the morning after she wakes up she wants to play she wants to run around and one hour before going to bed and then the rest of the day she pretty much wants to sleep or chill or she just stays in my lap or next to me when i'm at the computer i have found so much pleasure in taking care of her I feel like she's giving me a lot more than I'm giving her for sure. I can do like a more detailed haul, but I think one of the things I got uh, right was her bed. Super, super fluffy and it's supposed to be anti-anxiety for sure. It keeps her warm and it feels like she's next to like another fairy animal or something. It's like a nest and it's huge for her, but that was the smallest size I could get. The other day she was like, stealing food from her cat sisters she took them to her little bed which is in another separate room when they're to eat them so, and of course she cannot eat that the other thing because i was told they eat here and there and they don't really eat all that much like we say here picoteo it's like like a little bird so they need to be offered food constantly they're very tiny one of the things that can happen is that she has hypoglycemia but that's <laughs> Yeah, but now I'm confident that's not going to happen because she does have a healthy appetite. It's true she doesn't eat a lot, but she like she creates things like for instance chicken. We say pochito in Spanish. Um, she loves it. She goes crazy for it. So it's good as a treat also to reward her. She's eating royal canning puppy mini. And the other thing I've tried to uh, wash her tiny paws before going to bed not every day because she's mostly inside she still uh, she still needs to have a few more shots and because of her size the vet told me she's not going to be able to walk outside until she's four months old but honestly she gets all the exercise she needs in here just just running around the apartment cannot stress enough how tiny she is and we do play with her a lot so she does get her exercise the most important thing for her right now is that she's healthy and she doesn't get in contact with other dogs or animals or even people like could, that could accidentally step on her outside but even so the vet told me like you have to think of her more of an 
indoor dog even though you are going to walk her she's not going to be a dog that's going to walk for you know half an hour with you she's going to maybe a couple of blocks and that's that and you're going to have to be very careful of larger dogs and all those things the good thing is that in the building i found just by chance the other day one chihuahua mama and her chihuahua also a girl i already got her number so eventually when she has all her shots i'm going to start with her socializing with people she's met my entire family even with the kids she's honestly amazing and super sweet super sociable like and i love that about her i want to keep her that way she trusts humans a lot uh, which is a good thing it's good for her to feel that way and to continue having multiple positive experiences with humans so that she keeps her beautiful temper we will eventually train her um, to prevent separation anxiety but like i said i am mostly at home eventually i may have to go places where i cannot take her so it's important in the meantime i'm just leaving her on her own for like 10 minutes and i'm on the other room and then i come back and give her a treat because that's what i was advised to do but i cannot i don't find it in my heart yet to leave her for a longer period of time also because like she is vulnerable and i i want to keep an eye on her but she's doing so well like she learns so fast her cat sisters are going to be best friends soon and they are probably going to play together or nap together which is something they all have in common you know you made the right decision when you feel i should have done this sooner and that's the way i feel about her oh wait i want to show you another thing i got that i think is really cool and now that she's napping i can show you this is a hoodie by this brand i don't know if it's an international brand it has this kangaroo thing over here and this is for extra support there's like so you can put her in there if you have to do something and you need your hands sometimes oh there she is Oh, there she goes. <laughs> Super oversized. What's cool is that I have my hands to do other things <laughs> um, and I can still have her, you know, right next to me. And I still haven't used it to kind of go around um, or run errands because I have another thing for that. I have like a crossbody uh, belt bag that's specifically designed and breathable for puppies and she loves it there i keep a blanket inside one that she uses regularly and that is you know familiar to her and uh, i have taken her many many places and she behaves really really well so we miss her already anyways she smells amazing and uh, i think i was told i have to bathe her with baby shampoo once a month approximately she smells amazing all the time and i also keep her things really really clean because she sleeps with us and our cats are not jealous of her sleeping with us because their routine is mostly at least one of our cats comes for a relaxing massage in the evening and then she goes she likes to sleep in the living room area and the other one sleeps in the living room area. They do like to nap in our bed. We have this duvet covers. So uh, every time we change our sheets, which is once or twice a week, we change our duvet covers, you know. Once again, they're super clean animals, but still for us and for our allergies and all of that, and just general hygienic purposes, we change that a lot. I think it's um, definitely something good to have because you can just um, machine wash it at home regularly you don't have to pay for you know, extra fees to have it professionally cleaned somewhere else we, we do that with the duvet itself but that happens every few months so we don't need to do it as regularly um, a hyper like any puppy in the evening uh, use some uh, puppy calming music that we found on youtube but how can i not love youtube for so many reasons that literally brings her back to the you know bedtime mood 
and we just turn off the lights and i would say the only one thing that we need to start working on is that she when she gets super excited uh, playing she starts biting a little bit which is very normal <laughs> for a puppy to do but sometimes it can be you know her teeth are really really sharp like needles so you need to start like telling her no and that's a hard thing to do when something is so cute and small so if anyone has any tips on bringing up a chihuahua in a healthy healthy way uh, please do share in the comments below i will make another video to address anything else definitely stick around because um well she doesn't seem to bother to be in my videos so as long as that's the case um you're going to be able to uh, see her regularly and watch her grow and i will catch up with you once again on my next one